Good evening, everyone. How are you today? It's me, Shane Lee. Um, it's 9.42 a.m. And today I want to talk to you about the workout routine called the Weekend Warriors, right? Now, what this is, is this is a person who works uh, five days a week, Monday through Friday, and generally uh, has only the weekend to work out. Now, what they typically do is they'll choose like Wednesday or Tuesday or Thursday and work out one of those few days and then we'll work out primarily on the weekend and now they'll do like um, their whole routine on the weekend and now what they'll do during the week is a few of their routines and stuff like that like on t Tuesday Wednesday or Thursday you know something like that or they might alternate like one week work do it on Wednesday and then Tuesday and Thursday or something like that. Mm -hmm. Now when I was taking Simdo with uh Rin Shi Lane, uh um what happened there is he had his main classes on uh I think Monday, Wednesday and Friday, maybe, if I remember correctly. And then uh he uh, well, Cliff Yon, he had his on Monday, uh, Tuesday, and Thursday, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh -huh. And then uh, Colin was basically the same way Monday, Tuesday, and or, or Tuesday and Thursday, something like that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, and that was the basic. Uh, or karate when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, usually unless you're doing an online course, which can be up to you, I know. But unless you're doing an online course, it usually takes like um, two to three years to get your black belt. Mm -hmm. Now, if the online course, you have to be perfect, no, I know, for the instructors to give you your yellow belt, your orange belt and so on and so forth mm -hmm. now in any style you gotta start at the bottom and work your way to the top mm -hmm. now they did offer orange belt to black belt but I took the whole course reason is um, if you're teaching self defense and you have to teach children of course you need to know all the defense techniques for um, youth to adult and, uh, now, it's not so you can use it to hurt a child, right? You want to teach the child how to defend themselves against an attacker. That's why you do it. Now, um, the point is, though, all styles have different ways, different movements, and things like that. And it's your job to make sure if you want to become a black belt, you know it all. You know it all. <laughs> Into the beginning. Now, like, with Tracy Kimpo. For example, they have videos all the way up to fifth degree black belt in a book, which I can read along with, right? Now, um, this here is the DVD showing all the katas all the way up to fifth degree black belt. Mm -hmm. So if I want to reference this to, and the book, I can learn the katas better and have a better understanding of it both written and uh, through observing, right? Now, the point there is, when you do a martial arts and you're taking a certain style, the written can explain to you things, if you don't have an instructor, that the video can only show you, right? So, if you have video and uh, written a book, right, then you might really learn the art effectively, right? If not, well, you're just sort of tinkering, right? Now, this here is Ed Parker's system, the fifth degree black belt, too. But this here only goes into um, a book-like uh, setting. This is a CD-ROM, right? So what this does is it just sort of shows you uh, basically the uh, things you need to do and uh, doesn't go into a lot of detail, right? So again, yeah. um, now... It'll show you the katas, but with like a stick figure type thing. And uh, well, that means if you aren't sure about how to do the moves, 
Um, you can mess up a little bit. All right. That's why having a video and a book is better. Is better if you're trading by yourself, like me. That way you can both see and uh, read the, what you're supposed to do in the comma, right? Or the um, particular self-defense move. Which, well, that was, was I blocked here, blocked here, and then did a palm heel strike to the nose, right? So if someone was coming in to punch me, so I blocked them here, I blocked them here, and then I went straight at them because that left an opening. See, if they were doing a one, two, I block here, I block here, and then I strike there in the middle. All right. To knock them unconscious with a palm heel to the nose. Which is the quickest way to defend yourself and knock someone senseless is to um, counter their attack before they know what's going on. Right now. And, you know, each action has an equal but opposite reaction. So let's say they're doing what's called a haymaker here and a haymaker here. So you block here, block here, boom, that leaves them open, right? And you can do a palm heel quickly to the face and distract them and get away. Now, you don't want to, even if you're a black belt, fight toe to toe with an opponent, right? Reason is, you don't know what he knows, right? Your job isn't to uh, fight it out with every person on the street. Your job is to get safely away, period. period. Self-defense isn't about fighting toe-to-toe -to -toe like in the MMA. Yeah, no. That's to prove powers, or powers, powers, powers. <laughs> Your physical strength, right? Man-to-man, -man, right? To a, almost to knockout or death, right? Well, that's gladiator-style combat, right? Now... Only in Rome or countries that uh, use those kind of activities is that okay. And, uh, now, to knock out is different than to the death. That's fine too. And, uh, but again, uh, you know, some people say just because you knock somebody out don't mean it's over either. So it all depends, right? Because um, if the person can revive within a certain amount of time, like with me and my car accident or me in a three story fall, mm -hmm. either one. <laughs> If I revived from both and started uh, talking in a low, grunting old voice and started coming to and said, or something like that, <laughs> and scared the hell out of Roddy and Vivian to where they wrecked the car and called the police and, uh, to cover up their crime, and, uh, or Ryan and Sonya, right? Because if you have amnesia, there's always two possible suspects either way. Either way. But um, the main suspect, though, is still Little Roddy, I know. Because he's trying to suggest, oh, I wouldn't be hurting the car. He says, no, I, I wouldn't get a scratch on me, right? Bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> it's called Dead Man's Curve because of that, I know. You die at Dead Man's Curve. Everyone who read it, Dead Man's Curve died for Little Roddy, dumbass. Maybe that's why he OD'd on drugs, right? He couldn't face the truth, I know. And he took the easy way out, rather than telling me the truth, I know. And like I said, one time when Joey was spending the night, and, you know, we, we I still had the bunk beds from when we lived at, um, in Pine Or. Mm-hmm. On Midland Road. I forget the address there, but it was like seven something. Mm -hmm. Or five something. Toward the, towards the end of the road, we were about the only trailer out there. We had our own land, but there was a little bit of complication with that. But again, we were trying to move on up. Mm -hmm. Well, the point is, though, um, when you move on up, um, People want to keep you down a lot, a lot, a lot. and uh, that's what's going on with BTG and Craig. I know. Now the thing is, if I resurrected again, I don't remember the fight nor the three-story fall itself. So whatever happened there, only the witnesses would know. I know. 
the, either the guy who said he found me behind the building, or if I made it to the front of the building, the people there. And, uh, but there will be more witnesses in the front of the building than behind the building, right? Right. <laughs> Only one might could have found me in the back. And uh, if I made it to the front, <laughs> I might have had to fight my way out. And, uh, which is why someone from security could have overreacted, right? Now, of course, the Navy don't want that getting out that another Navy personnel who was in security attacked a paranoid schizophrenic for possibly surviving a three-story fall, which he had to use to cover up the attack anyway. anyway. <laughs> like Little Roddy using the car accident without being injured himself, right? Like, he wouldn't be injured, right? <laughs> you know that's a lie, right? Right. <laughs> Well, the same with the three-story fall. You can't act like it couldn't have killed me if I landed it, and you know I landed it. And that's who I think BTG is, the guy who knows I landed the fall. I don't know. Or Craig, too. I don't know. Or Mary Snow, too. I don't know. That don't mean they're not the same person, either. I don't know. Just pretending they're three different people, right? So I don't know that either, either. But they're the ones acting like, oh, well, anyone can easily land a three-story fall. No. Most people die. <laughs> Unless you're trained like I was to land it, right? Which I keep trying to tell them that I trained in ninjutsu and was jumping off my trailer. That's why I did it and I was able to do it. I was able to catch onto the ledge as I was sleeping down and twist my way to land safely. Now that's called a reverse dip uh, from a from a um, in gymnastics. It's called a um, reverse dismount. What it means is you're facing backwards and down, and what you do is you flip around, and then you land safely on the ground, right? But that's what I did. Uh -huh. Or I also could have, you know, you don't want to be close to the building because of the ledge, right? Another way to do it is to um, also swing out a little bit and do it that way and land right-sided versus left-sided because the right is much stronger as side, right? Well, whoever attacked me Damage the left more than the right. <laughs> That's on the next race, asshole. So don't tell me that. I know, I know you're lying if you tell me that. I don't know. <laughs> Clearly, the left is where I feel the pain, not the right. Right. The left center, not the right center. The right really has no pain. <laughs> still, still. Right, right. No, it, it looked like it was fractured a little bit, I know, but not as badly, I know. They really took it out on the left side, which I would tell them is my weaker side, right? So they concentrated on that side, like, again, Little Roddy not being injured in the car accident, but acting like I would, could choose in the fall which way I would fall as well, I know. That the left would be worse than the right. When you fall straight down, if you're not now on the way down, you fall straight down, right? You land with both legs, right? If you're facing that. Just a medical uh, rationale, like the guy who fell from the tree in a previous video I made as well. And, uh, his right was more center mass, right? And the, the, both pelvic, pelvises were broken equally, not abnormally either. Now, of course, the Navy don't want to get out that someone probably in security attacked someone who was paranoid schizophrenic either. So who do you think they're covering for? Him. him. <laughs> Not the paranoid schizophrenic who was being discharged for uh, you know, having a hard time on the ship. Right. Uh -oh. <laughs> See, they just thought I just didn't get along with people or something, right? And blamed it on me. Blamed it on me. Because of my mental illness. But again, when you diagnose someone with a mental illness, and they revived from the attack or the three-story fall in two to three weeks and start getting up and walking again. Don't you think that's beyond paranoid schizophrenia? <laughs> no matter who you are, no matter who you are. See what I mean there? Right. And who don't want to admit it? They don't want to admit it. All right. Who don't want to show me how severely I'm injured? They don't want to show me how severely I'm injured. But to show me patterns, like the yin and yang, all right? The yin, at least, or the yang, whichever one is the black or the white. But again, it, that sort of looks like a teardrop, right? Is impossible in a normal 
accident anyway. So that is a lie. And uh, I know that's a lie. I know. That's impossible. In a little circle, that's a lie. That's a lie. You cannot do that in a three story vault. And, uh, that means whoever made that x ray lied. So did Memorial, right? When they did the same thing. And again, I mean, but the ankle ain't a lie, nor is it that I feel pain in the sacrum where I think the actual injury is. To, to, though, again, if they were hitting me up, that would do to paralyze me, right? And make it look like, again, little Roddy did with the car accident without being injured himself, that I was injured in the fall, but again, focused on one side over the other. I know. Focusing on the left because I told him to, right? And like a dumbass, he did what I said to do. You can't do that in a three story fall and concentrate on one side or the other. I know. Because you don't know how the person will land. Feet first pointing down means you're going to land feet first pointing down unless you hit and fall backwards and then you would land flat on your back, right? Which either way could kill you if not that, right? Because you are not conscious of what's going on, right? Well, that's why most people either land on their head or neck or something like that, sideways, sideways, even too. I know. You could fall three ways, sideways, straight down, or back, I know. all these three ways, I know. either to the left side or the right side, straight down, or back. I know. Now, if you hit your head, what, you're going to fall? More back, more back. <laughs> if you go straight down, you might even land it, right? That's the point, that's the point. <laughs> Or if you are trained enough in gymnastics in ninjutsu, you might could do what's called a twisting dismount, right? Where you twist forward and then land that way. Mm -hmm. See? Now, if I remembered that night what happened and told him what I did, <laughs> again, that's why he knocked me out. That's again why it is sailor against sailor in the Navy, and that's why the Navy don't want to get out. And I don't have a choice because I'm paranoid schizophrenic anyway, so it's just a theory. Though you still said I fell three stories like they did. And you can neither prove it nor disprove it without witnesses either way. Because you know I was on the third floor, as do I. I know. You know they put me on the third floor in Portsmouth, and that's all part of the band board now. I know. And you can't undo an old web board and say it never happened unless what? I again forget that. I know. Let's see, have I forgotten a damn thing? No, boys, not a damn thing I told you then. Not a damn thing I told you then. No. That's your problem, too. I never forget, even with head trauma or sacral trauma, or not with trauma to the top of the head or the bottom of the side. Which, again, means like little Roddy, or Vivian, they were trying to knock me out, make me forget what happened, and maybe even paralyze me. I know. And that's what I would tell them in an argument, too. I know. Now, whoever attacked me was trying to make me forget something, and I forgot it, right? The only thing you can do is try to make me forget this, and if you do, I'm going to investigate it the same way as with the car sitting one day, because this is going to make me investigate that, right? <laughs> and that's going to make me investigate this, right? And they'll become two accidents that are unexplainable in first a normally developing child until the car accident. And then I started getting into a little bit of trouble, but still calm down before I joined the Navy, right? Right. I was doing everything I was supposed to do to not get in trouble again, right? <clears throat> then afterwards, when I was being discharged and stuff like that, and came back to Garden City, I was doing okay at first for the first, uh year in about 10 months and uh, but then i started getting in trouble with my co-workers and stuff like that so that's when i decided to go for a disability in july in july now i thought i had till august two years right confusion over the again amount of time between civilian having two years to file and after an accident and uh Navy only, um, military only having a year to file after the discharge. Right? Well, of course, if I'm paranoid schizophrenic and one thought wins out over the other and I'm not thinking clearly, or I'm even bipolar, right? And I'm not thinking clearly, right? I can get those two things easily confused 
because the Navy does do things in a two-year pattern, including destroy your records. <laughs> That's why they told me to keep my records, which I still got them. I got them all on uh, the car accident to the three-story fault. So, anyway. So, anyway, I'm talking about weekend warriors right now and how to be a weekend warrior. Mm -hmm. Well, right now I'm working on golf for right now, for today, for today. So I got my equipment set up to play a little golf. Mm -hmm. It's not a big deal. It's just a little bit of swinging and uh, I'm going to play pool golf on, in the streets, try not to get run right, right over. Um, but uh, I got to find an even surface because my, uh, garage, my garage and my um, driveway are, my driveway is slant. You know, I don't have enough room in my garage, so I might have to take it into the street a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I'll just play a quick game of pool golf, which is what it's called. And then I'll play uh, a putt game I found. I know. Now, I thought it was stolen, but I found it uh, by the door between the uh, max climber and the uh, other stuff. And, uh, I guess I, for some reason, didn't see it. I don't know. <laughs> but it's back anyway. Anyway. Whatever happened there. For me not to remember it being put there or there before. I did do a video on it, right? Right. <laughs> so whatever. Whatever. So anyway, that's my morning routine for this weekend. Now, the weekend warriors exercise almost uh, anywhere from what four to no more than eight hours each day on the weekend saturday and sunday right now this is when they do them their max weight and their max press and they work on their um different routines right their different parts of the body right now. now if you can work out you know five days a week you don't need to work out on the weekends right but if you're disabled or something like me and um can only function every other day right or you might can go a week full force but then the next week you're tired as hell and has to lay down for that week like when I was working for Catherine Stevens at Labor Finders um, they put me in a job where I was moving big ass tires around so they could go on the uh, trailers of the trucks right 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 well um, I did good the first week and I was able to keep up with everybody. But the second week was when the, you know, disability kicked in, right? <laughs> and I was doing everything slower and stuff like that. And the guy wanted to hire me and everything, but he saw something was, you know, slowing me down, right? The second week. So he decided, I, I, I told him, I can't keep up the pace. I have to quit, right? And I let him know Friday I couldn't just keep up the pace because of my disability. I don't know. And I wanted to work for him, and they even hired me, but I, I couldn't keep on doing it. I know, not every day, you know, every day. So that job lasted about two weeks, and then Friday, um, a few days after they hired me, I had to quit, right? And they had to hire someone else, right? Now that's not a failure; that's a success. Anyone who can, who can move tires about fifty to six to a hundred pounds around. Is a pretty strong guy, you know. and I was able to do all that. You know. So, but the first week was fine, but the second week I couldn't keep up the pace because of the back pain and the ankle pain and all that. You know. So that became a problem. Right? So anyway, that's what happened there. So uh, let's keep going. And all right, but that's what a weekend warrior is a weekend warrior is someone who works out primarily during the weekends they might work out tuesday wednesday or thursday as well they could do all three days or alternate it right but they you want to work out at least three times a week right to get um some uh muscle mass right and then they pr work out primarily on the weekend like they'll work out from eight to noon I don't know. maybe go eat lunch with their wife or girlfriend or whatever, mistress, <laughs> or both, or both, <laughs> whatever they have, whatever they have, and then, uh, after that, after that, I don't know, all right, but, all right, 
You know, like, if I was Tina, I would have told David, well, if we really hit it off, we could move in together and not even get legally married, right? And yet, man, <laughs> just joking, but, you know, right, right? If I got both of them pregnant or neither one of them pregnant, right? You know, we didn't think about that, I guess, if we had a menage a trois or something, but if I talked them into it and then we did, fine. If we didn't, fine. <laughs> I don't care, I don't care. But if I don't remember it, I'm worried because uh, of the amnesia from the car accident spilling over into that, right? Which, again, I would tell David, well, what about my car accident, man? I survived that shit. That could have killed me, too. I know. So what, do you want to kill me for having a menage a trois when you can't say you wouldn't do the same yourself? I know. Now, if they both came on to you and you ever talked them into it, right, wouldn't you have done the same thing? I don't know. <laughs> That's what I mean, that's what I mean. Now, the reason I didn't remember it is caused amnesia, I know. Sorry, Tina and Kathy, if I don't remember the men I just wrong, but David didn't want me to because he knows he can't take me man to man. And again, I mean, though he was knocked upside the head with the war for retaliation for that shit, wasn't you, David? Right? Karma, right? it's a bitch. Now, as far as I know, again, I was never with Quinn, but like I said, I, know, I can't only resist someone so much, I know. But Gwen would have to be the aggressor, and I would have to let her be on top, cause what, I know. Um, again, if David were to walk in on this fight, he would go batshit, he would go batshit. But whatever, but whatever. <laughs> and I, again, wouldn't remember that either, either. But like I said, I was trying to help Gwen with, um, because, uh, and David both get on their feet, all right, and didn't judge either situation, though again, Gwen didn't get pregnant again until after, uh, I started helping David anyway, so I don't know, I don't know. So that's the whole problem there, that's the whole problem there. Now, of course, uh, the girl, Megan is David's, and, you know, uh, Dakota looks like David, so I'm not arguing that, I know. But, like I said, like I said, um, only way that could have happened with Gwen, though, is if, again, Gwen was the aggressor, mounted me, and I wouldn't take no for an answer, I wouldn't take no for an answer. So that's the only way that could have happened, but anyway, you know. So again, like, you know, all girls, I would, you know, interact with her, <laughs> and would do what I would normally do. <laughs> Which is eat a little pussy, um, play with her titties and kiss her, of course, and you know, do what I knew from Mary Bell, right? To to <laughs> Mary Bell showed me a few things. Don't know if I did that with men, but I guess I don't, I don't know. I don't have a memory of it, so again that means David knocked me out if that were to happen, right? And like I said, unless they're sneaking into my room and again I did spend the night over at David's and slept in my room, I know. And as far as I know, slept there all night. Didn't leave, didn't. No one came in that I remember. <laughs> That's all that. That's all you know. So again, I know. And he had me over for dinner a few nights, but, and tacos and stuff like that. And again, I ate dinner with him a few nights. So. No big deal, no big deal. And of course, he had a kidney stone pass. And, Painful, painful. He had to go to jail because of child support payments, right? I helped him out there. Mm -hmm. And that's what I remember right now. So again, so again. I was trying to be a, uh, a good friend. I was trying to be with a girlfriend uh, who he had a baby with. He did. Nor Angel. Oh, no. Because the reason I slept her wasn't to, um, was a, a confused reaction because of something she had said that I would taken out of context, right? That's what I said. I, I just took it out of context. Now looking back and her breaking up with him, there might have been more going on there than meets the eye. I don't know. Meaning it looks like she broke up with him because of their living conditions, right? What I mean by that is it wasn't that you weren't working, it was the actual house you were living in. You were supposed to be um, fixing it up, but it seemed to her like you weren't getting anywhere, I guess. I don't know. That's just a guess there, too. I don't know. 
but it still don't justify hitting her, but that was, again, because I thought she was insinuating I would uh, um, touch one of her children or something like that, or if she were to have a son, touch her son or something, which I would never do, which she would never do. Now, again, I don't care what child I have, boy, girl, or both, or neither, neither. Because I don't look at that that way, I don't know. But, again, if the Lord wants to, he can punish someone doing that, whereas normally they have a male or female child, and if you try to kill me and give them a male child versus a female child, I don't know, I don't know. this is craziness, I might would try to say. Uh, and most guys want a boy over a girl. That might be a problem some transgender people have that they don't want to admit to as to why they go transgender too. Now the thing is, like I said, honesty with God is the best policy. Uh, transgender people, if you admit that you still feel that way, even though it might have been caused by your parents, you're better off. You're better off to admit that. Well, my parents made me feel this way since I was a kid that I was a boy and not a girl, so I decided to become one. Fuck you. Do that, do that. You'll be better off, you'll be better off. <laughs> With God, and God would say, okay, I understand. <laughs> Whereas Satan will condemn you for it because you're lying, because you're lying. <laughs> well, if you tell the truth, he can't condemn you and blame your parents because it's partly their fault. I know. <laughs> That's just being honest, right? But again, the only difference is you got the opposite sperm from your dad you wanted to be. Or your dad wanted you to be a boy and you were a girl or a girl and you were a boy, right? Same with uh, Cher or Chas or Chastity, whatever you want to call her. Uh, she was at one time Chastity and fine with everything. Then she changed to Chas and ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> but I accept that. Now when she was Chastity, I thought she was pretty. Right? And I thought she was a very cute girl. And cuter than her mom, in my opinion. But then when she became Chaz, again, I'm not interested in transgender people, male or female. Right? So that's the point. That's the point. I just would, wouldn't go there, wouldn't go there. Either way, either way. But again, you know, even if Chastity wants to go back, I mean, Chaz wants to go back to being Chastity, you can do that too if you're a female. I know. Now, the male, he has to cut his appendage off, right? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> now, once he does that, he can't go back to being male. <laughs> That's why it's sort of a, you know, gray area there, if you do that. Uh, now, all you're doing, though, once you remove your penis and your testicles, is you're a eunuch trying to be, be a female-type person, right? Now, the problem is you're still genetically a male. Oh, no. That's what I'm trying to explain there, too, to, like, Bruce Jenner or Caitlyn Jenner, as she's called now. Oh, no. Now, the thing is, once you remove your package... You're no longer a man or a woman. You're sort of in the middle. You're sort of in limbo. I mean, that's why it's, you know, up to you what you do with that. But you're still not a full female because you can't have children. And that's why I say you need to be honest about that to everyone. I mean, that, about what you are. I mean, like, with me, even though Caitlin is somewhat of an attractive person, as she is, and I will call her she in respect to her transformation if she does the full Sex change too. Uh, now, breast just makes you uh, he uh, she. <laughs> you still have your package, Bruce, Bruce, and you're still Bruce Caitlin, right? You're not fully Caitlin yet either. Now, if you go ahead and cut it off, then you're Caitlin, right? But you're also not fully female nor male because your DNA don't lie, and, uh, even if you do. Now, I can't tell you to do that or not, and, uh, but as long as you have the uh, penis and the testicles, you're still Caitlyn Bruce Jenner, right? <laughs> you're sort of like a Greek version of a hermaphrodite, right? <laughs> That's what you are. That's what you are. <laughs> a Greek version of a hermaphrodite, right? Now, the Greek version has testicles and a penis and tits, right? So you're just a Greek version of a hermaphrodite. Now, the real version, the medical version, is a person that has a penis, a vagina, and tits, right? Now, you can't really do that the way an uh, intersex person can as well, because they're born that way, right? 
you were born male and born transgender to female, right? Which is understandable, but like I said, I'm not here to judge you, but tell you the consequences of your actions. And what you're doing is being a Greek version of, of a hermaphrodite, right? In Greek mythology, right? And that's what you are. You're a hermaphrodite, right? Until you cut it off, right? <laughs> Right, right. That's just honesty for you there, right? Not lying as a minister of God, trying to help all people understand what they're doing, period, period. And not judging them, and not judging them under condemnation, like Satan does, right? Trying to teach you the good from the evil, the right from the wrong, even if you're doing something someone else is uncomfortable with, it, like wanting to change your gender, right? Now, what Jesus is showing me is Peter was hung upside down, right? Well, that's why the nails were through the wrist. Of the man on the shroud of turret. Jesus was hung right side up. That's why it would be through the hands and not the wrists. Now, if you're hold upside down, you gotta hold up your whole body weight vertically, right? This way to that way. Well, that's why he was crucified similarly to Jesus. They might have even pierced him through with the spear, right? Like Jesus. Why? To show the world that they could have killed. Peter and Jesus. Now again, the resurrected Jesus resurrected Peter too. I believe that, Peter, why I told you to have your image on it. <sighs> now you're 5'10, I'm 5'8, so you're not my dad, but we do favor because of our Persian ancestry. See, you're just as much from West Asia as I am. As I am. That's why we favor a little bit in the facial area. I but it's you on the shroud, not Jesus, right? And they did you exactly how they did Jesus, except upside down. And the Jews buried you, but because of the haste of the burial, <coughs> they just straight the cloth over you. But when you were resurrected, right, by Jesus from heaven, right, you left the image on the shroud. <laughs> now, Jesus' shroud, according to John, was bound head to foot, right? So there would be no image there, all right? But, again, that's why the, the Romans worship Peter as the first pope, right? Though they almost worship him iconically, right? Which is his fault for not telling the whole truth about Jesus being Andronicus, right? Like the Gnostics were trying to do. And why Constantine might could have used the Shroud of Turin to deny the Gnostics that God was Andronicus as well as Melodima, right? Now, what that means, though, for the falls of Constantine and Peter is that the shroud is sort of a resurrection of Peter, right? Not Jesus. But it traces back to Jesus if you read the scriptures, right? But it's still Peter who was hung upside down in similar fashion as Jesus, right? Now, they don't describe how Peter was crucified, but in the text, or John was referring to it, and he said he was crucified as his Lord, upside down. Mm -hmm. Only difference, Means, meaning he was beat. And, uh, and when Peter was going to, to it, and, uh, he says, Jesus said to him, I'm going to be crucified again, Peter. Is what I heard in rumor. And, rumor. and upside, down, upside down. That's why they would use it to the wrist and not through the hands. Like Jesus. Understand. Understand. Because the weight would be upside down. Upside down. Not right side up. Right, right side up, you can use it in the hands. Upside down, you have to use it in the wrist. And they would know that. They would know that. <laughs> but we would not. We would not. We would be all confused about the two different stories and the Gospels and with the Shroud of Turin too. I know. But if we put it all together, by listening to every story, not just the ones you hear in the church, I know, who wants it to be Jesus, but everything John said, everything everyone said, including modern science. I know. Then we can come to the conclusion... Jesus might have been a hermaphrodite. The Elijah and Moses they saw might have been Jesus becoming two and going back to one. Which is morphine. Which is morphine. Metamorphine. Metamorphine. He went from one to two, back to one, and then to a light, and then it stopped. It stopped. If he could do that as a human being, right, he reached his full potential here on the earth, right, as a true hermaphrodite and the angel of the Lord. Now, Adam and Eve were also made from 
and drunkenness to male and female. <clears throat> but they don't tell you that. Scripturally, they hint at it through the Hebrew word, word Shaddai and the word, root word Shad and the word, root, and the word Shadim as well. Oh, no. Now, there are other words for female breasts just like in the Greek, right? And like the Greek, they have about up to four or five in the Hebrew for the word Shadim. And they also have a word for mistress, which is downplayed, but it's there. And also a word for, um, which is Shaday Oath, or Shaday Im, something like that. Shaday, uh, Shid, Shid, D, Ah, or something like that. Shid, Oath, alright. Now, also for Queens is Makal. Ah, uh, Mikal, or uh, Makal Ah, and Mikal, and uh, Melik King is plural for kings, right? Mel, Ma, La, Oath is for queens, right? And Mala, Mel, La, Mala, ma, basically Mala, something like that. Malak, Malaka, uh, I think, is for queen. Uh, and then that's the point there, right? Now what Jesus did was become his male and female self and then went back to one, all right? It also appeared as a light first, transfiguring first to the purest form of God, which is light, right? Then becoming male and female, and then going back to the androgynous form to show in heaven they can morph, right? Though only Jesus could do it here on the earth. That's why I'm not Jesus, Peter. I know that. I, know that. I can't morph. Right? I'm only Shane. I'm only Shane. <laughs> now, Jesus can look like me in heaven, but that's still different, right? Now, could Jesus make me his second in command or something like of great importance? Sure, sure. But that's not to take Gabriel's or Raphael's or whoever that is now their place either, either. Now, like with Judas, Bishop Rick being given to Matthias, someone took Peter, I mean, Satan's place in heaven as well, Lucifer's place in heaven as well. Now, first it was Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer, right? Now it's probably Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, maybe, I don't know. Or one of the other elves, right? In the Hebrew. In the, Raphael means healing, I mean. Raphael came to try and heal the gap that Satan created when he fell. Uh, so Raphael's mentioned in the Maccabees and Beans and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So I know that too. I know. Or the Apocrypha. Or the Apocrypha. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm trying to place it what, all together in heaven and earth. So it was a, it was uh, Michael, Raphael, and Gabriel who appeared to Abraham, right? Michael was Jesus' name in heaven, right? As John pointed out in Revelation 12. Michael and his angels, well, Michael was the head angel or the archangel, right? <laughs> well, that's Jesus, that's the archangel, right? In heaven. Michael, what became Jesus, right? Unless you're suggesting Mary was a true hermaphrodite herself and conceived Jesus in her womb, right? That's the only woman, way a woman could give seeds if she's a hermaphrodite, right? In the earth, in the earth. So if it wasn't through that process, then what Jesus did was Michael became the embryo Jesus and formed Jesus in the womb. Now, the thing is, though, he had to also form him as an androgynous child. I mean, Reason being is that um, Jesus had to know both sides, right? Equally, equally. And know what it was like to live in a world where male and female dominated as well. So that when he reached adulthood, he could um, reveal it as best he could to the world as well. By God sent him that way to us in the spirit of Michael as well. As well. Now... Does this mean Michael literally became Jesus and left this storm in heaven? Probably not, probably not. But he did form the child within the womb of the Virgin Mary 
as an embryo in his image and likeness like Adam and Eve, right? Right. That's why we get a little confused about it, too. Now, in heaven, you have Jesus, the Lamb, standing before the throne of God with the 24 elders and all that. And the four beasts, right? Right. Well, that's the point. That's the point. Now, the hierarchy in heaven is Michael is the chief angel, but Jesus is the Lord of the earth, heaven and earth, right? After Michael, right? In a way, too. In a way, too. He's still responsible to his father who conceived him, which he said, my father is greater than I am, right? Well, Michael will be his father. Now, God, through Michael, conceived Jesus in the womb of the Virgin Mary through the Holy Ghost, as the scriptures say, is right, right? Without sexual means, right? Forming the child as an embryo preconceived both male and female, right? Without joining the sperm. That would be what Zeus would do. Zeus would come down and impregnate mortal women, right? That's not really a problem with God, but unless Jesus becomes fully male, he can't do that either. And Jesus knows neither is the male without the female nor the female without the male, and the Lord either way, either way. So that also means if he can become fully male singly, he can also become fully female singly, right? So we don't want to deal with that either. All right, well, um, I've been sort of trying to figure out what to do for today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work on uh, watching some of my videos throughout the day on and off. It's about 10.28 a.m. So in about 30 minutes, I'm going to go play my pool golf in the street a little bit if I can. Try to make sure I don't hit in, in a, a car or anything and set up boundaries and stuff like that. And, and if the car is, I might do it for 30 minutes so I don't have a whole lot of traffic to interfere with or stuff like that. And, and show you how to play pool golf pool. And I might do a little bit of putting to show you how to putt a little and show you how to use the swing thing uh, as well. Alright, talk to you later. Bye-bye.